You know, as always, man, we want to give uh, credit to, to Pat and, and having his team ready to play Northwestern. Hard fought game, uh, four quarter game as we expect in you know Big Ten play. Um, you know, we don't always make it easy on ourselves, um, but I'm proud of the way this team continues to show the culture and the, uh, the ability to persevere, um, battling back uh, once again, and really proud of that. Of, in terms of the type of culture we've developed inside that locker room. Um, we're six and two, something for our team to be really proud of, uh, becoming bowl eligible. Um, you know, this team and fan, be, fan base should be really proud of being able to get that accomplished. And what it does now is it earns us an opportunity every week uh, to take the next step and, and the opportunities get better and better. And of course, we're doing it one game at a time. Um, we're gonna have some much needed rest Players have about five days off total from now until we get back in here and start pre prepping for uh, Wisconsin. Uh, we'll go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of this week to get a jump start, and then they'll have you know Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, and then we'll be back in here the following Monday. Um, I think you know having a bunch of missing pieces out there today shows the growth and uh, the depth that we've created via recruiting and the way we're developing our young team. Uh, we saw a bunch of young guys step up and play big, and it starts with our quarterback. You know, Billy came in and you know really did a tremendous job of leading us and, and doing the things that he's been coached to do. Uh, the bye couldn't come at a better time. Um, we'll get some much needed rest, like I said, and get back to work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And uh, really excited um, for the team and for our fan base. You know, the alums showed up today, and it's always great when we get a chance to see former players come back and former uh, students come back and to get a win on homecoming is big. So, uh, with that, I'll open it up to any questions. Um, with the quarterback situation you knew you were going to be dealing with, was part of the game plan to lean on running the ball a bit more this week? And how much did Roman specifically kind of take some of the pressure off of Billy? Yeah, I wouldn't say that the plan was to just line up and, and run the ball. We, we, you know, once we made the decision game time wise to not play Liam, um, obviously we know that defensively they're going to do things to try to add pressure to the quarterback. Um, you know, the first half we, we ran our stuff. Uh, as we got in the locker room at halftime, Dan and the staff did a really good job of figuring out what runs we could run um, based on some of the looks. You know, when, when they saw the new quarterback, they got they, they played differently than what they had shown on tape, and as you expect. And uh, our offensive staff did a really good job of getting the ball on the perimeter with the outside zone and, and, and just gapping up inside. And, I mean, Roman Hemby came through big. Um, big runs, big time plays. Uh, he showed exactly what we talk about, his ability to hit the home run. And, you know, it couldn't have happened at a better time for us. We needed it. Mike, once again, your defense in the second half. Uh, I think that's three times in four halves where you guys have gotten an interception on the first possession for the other team. How huge is this defense for you guys? Yeah, you know, those turnovers have been just uh, you know, we're a team on offense that thrives off of the momentum of the game. And as a coach, you don't like it because you just want to have the consistency. But for whatever reason, when our defense gets us the ball, minus maybe the Purdue game, good things tend to happen. And, you know, we didn't necessarily get, a, get off to a fast start on offense uh, this week in the first half. But, you know, that, that first interception there at the, the start of the second half, uh, then our ability to go punch one in and, and get us back to where we tied the thing up was, was much needed. And, and the defense has done a really good job in the second half of getting things adjusted and coming up with timely plays. Uh, hey, Coach. I was wondering, uh, how close was Talia Posse playing today? Or like, what kind of went to that decision? To I mean, it, it's hard to say. I mean, we, we tried to let, practice him earlier in the week. Um, we saw how he responded, you know, on the middle of the week on Tuesday, or late Wednesday, Thursday. We didn't get many reps out of him. Um, you know, the goal was to try to have him at least as an emergency, but we made the decision, you know, to, you know late in the week to say, hey, let's shut it down. Um, you know, we, we think we, we felt confident in Billy and his ability to execute it, and you know, he came out with just that. And the follow up on, uh, on Jay Sean Barham, it was his absence had anything to do with the injury that. What happened last week against Indiana? It was an injury that you know, they caused him to miss this week. Coach, from uh, the time right before the half, when you went on the 88-yard drive, you 
played very tough physical football for the last quarter plus that drive, or last half plus that drive. What happens to the team when they get into that mode? They did a great job of the same thing at Indiana. It's a much different team at that point. Well, it starts with the guys up front, man, and, and you know, guys like Jalen Duncan, uh, Spencer Anderson, Jahari Branch, uh, DJ Glaze, those guys are veteran players, and we've talked about their uh, growth and maturation, and you know, there's nothing that's been better for us this year than being able to have a complimentary run game, and especially with the young quarterback, it's always a, it's always kind of a security blanket when you have the ability, and I can tell you that their confidence has grown because at halftime they came in and said, Coach, let's figure out the best runs and let's, let's run the ball. We, you know, these guys, we can knock them off the ball. And, it created some confidence in there, and then again, Roman did a tremendous job getting behind those big guys. And we needed those. We needed the run game in the second half, and it opened up the play-action pass to Brock, where he got in the end zone. And it makes us just uh, more uh, tougher to defend when we get the run game going like that. Hey, coach. Uh, wanted to ask, with Talia and with a lot of the other injuries, how much of the decision to not play some guys went into the fact that you guys have this week and then a bye week? So I mean, the decision to not play guys was based on injury. It wasn't based on saying, hey, we can afford to not play. We got too much respect for uh, teams in this league, and you know, we can never um, come in with that type of mindset. You know, obviously, we're, we're aware that a bye week, I mean, I don't know how many teams have gone 12 straight weeks when you count four weeks of training camp, eight straight games uh, before we get our first break. And, and it, it, this is a tough physical game, tough physical league that takes, it, takes its toll. Uh, on you, so uh, you know, not playing players was based on if they could play or not. Because our goal was to find a way to get bowl eligible here at home, and we played the best available players. And then on defense, how did you guys adjust the pickle at the linebacker position with something limited? Um, you said, how did we adjust? Yeah. I mean, we played the guys available. We saw Caleb Weekman playing. We saw Jeremy Spragans playing. We saw Ahmad. You know, Fanage went out with a hamstring there late. We played the guys available, and because of how we practice and the way we do things. Uh, those guys have an expectation that next man up, and I was really proud of the way they came in and competed. Yes, uh, hey, Mike, kind of to go off what Varun said, uh, can you speak to the versatility of your defense, especially when you ran a lot of five defensive back sets and having those guys having to play maybe in a place they weren't typically used to playing at that second level, still performing and putting themselves well? Well, they all have played. I mean, Jeremy Spragans is a guy that week in and week out, you look up, he's playing 30 plays, 25 plays. We rotate a bunch of players on defense, and, you know, we come in with that mindset. You know, we have a staff meeting on Saturday where we determine – how many plays we want guys to play because understanding that this is this is a long, long season and we've got to have everybody prepared. We recruit all these guys to come in and play for us. They all have the ability to play. Uh, like I said, it was great, great to see Caleb Wheatman, uh, who's played some as a freshman, um, you know, be able to get extended playing time due to the injuries. Uh, you know, Maude McCullough has been one of the unsung heroes of our defense in terms of being able to play both backers uh, position. but. Uh, playing nickel didn't affect that other than the depth that we lost. And so we ended up playing four linebackers uh, that have all played some meaningful snaps for us. Hey, Coach, how significant is it for your program to come, become bowl eligible with four games still up to go? You know, it's significant for our fan base. It's significant for our, you know, our psyche, um, you know, to get that part. You know, it's one of the first bowls that we want to we create year in and year out. And hopefully uh, that's the foundation of what we do is every year to be a bowl eligible team. But now what it does is it allows us with each next step, you know, with each next game, uh, it allows that we take care of business the right way to have better and better opportunities ahead of us. Now, again, we're going to continue to go one game at a time. Uh, we've been able to achieve one goal, but uh, we still have a lot of work to do. We're still in that development stage of our program, but it's great to see us uh, be able to bear the fruits of the hard work and, and these guys really, you know, showing tremendous character. Hey, Coach, could you take us through what you saw from Philly's decision-making today, maybe any differences you saw from the first half and the second half? Then? I mean, I thought in the first half uh, he got a little unsettled. You know, anytime you start seeing your hips, the quarterback's hips parallel to the line of scrimmage and head going from left to right. Uh, so what we tried to do was do things to, to calm his feet down. And anytime you see his feet in the back, uh, he's making good decisions. And, you know, Dan did a good job uh, of staying with him throughout it. Um, the receivers, I mean, again, they – didn't get a lot of opportunities today, but they were really unselfish and surrounding themselves. Uh, 
to you know to give Billy the confidence and let him know we had the confidence in him. And then the run game showed up big for us, which really helps the young quarterback. Mike, the last possession for you guys offensively in the first half. You guys are down 10. You're able to keep the ball for over four minutes, 16 plays. You didn't get into the end zone, but you're putting some points on the board going into the half. How important was that from a momentum standpoint? It's always good when you can steal a possession or steal points there. You know, love to see us finish with touchdowns when we get down there. We've had, we had two opportunities in this game where, again, the Terps versus Terps show up with penalties and you know, snap on the, the drive there late in the fourth quarter. Uh, those are the ones that we'll, we'll watch on tape and we'll continue to coach our guys through it. Uh, but again, man, my hat's off to this team. My hat's off to the coaching staff and all of our staff uh, for the job they've, d they've done to put us in this position where uh, we get a much needed break, but we went and earned a, a, a great victory. Hey, how are you doing, Coach? What's up, Joshua? Um, I have a question about Billy Edwards. How did you feel about him running as much as he did and not necessarily sliding, but fighting for those extra yards? And that's who Billy is. Um, you know, we, we, we talked to him about protecting himself on the runs. Uh, injuries are part of the game. Uh, he did a really good job of protecting the football today, which is always key. Uh, like to see him not take some of those extra shots, but if it's a third down, He's got to get the first down, and you've got to do what you need to do to, to sustain the drive. And uh, we'll continue to teach from this. You know, it's always great when you can learn and teach off of a win like this uh, to show him, and he's been able to add tremendous experience to his toolbox, which, when given the opportunity again, you know, he can learn from those things. And Coach Anton Littleton was in uniform today. Never saw the field. It looked like he was just walking gingerly on one of his legs before and after the game. Do you have an update on him? I mean, the only thing I know is we were in pregame warm up. He stepped kind of wrong, hyperextended it. Um, he he could have played the day, but uh, you know he ended up having to go put a knee brace on. He was a little ginger on it. Uh, I haven't been able to talk to our trainer now to see where he is, but I know in the pregame warm up, Tuan kind of stepped wrong and, and, and hyperextended his knee a little bit. But he felt he could go. Uh, we decided to just kind of ride Roman, and, and, and Kobe McDonald came up and came up big early. Uh, as we say, next man up mentality was in full effect. We're used to seeing Antoine on short yardage situations. How do you think your guys did in those type of situations? We had a couple third ones where I know Kobe ran tough up in there. We got confidence in all of our guys. You know, we try to create roles for every player in our program. And, you know, Tuan has been the short yardage guy, but just like anybody, uh, any position, you know, we always have a second guy ready to go if somebody goes down. And, and I thought the running backs, I thought Dan did a good job of, you know, we had a couple quick quarterback sneaks in there to sustain drives. And, you know, those are the types of things we have to be able to do is have uh, the ability if someone goes down, the next guy's got to step up and, and be able to be productive. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate Thank you, guys.